welcome everybody to my solo playthrough of 20 Bones Undertow. This is an RPG based sort of dungeon crawler battling game where you have encounters, have fights, level up your character, unlock new skills and abilities, and ultimately have a showdown with a tyrant or a mini boss and win the game. The game can be played in a series of rounds or all days, in which case you must have enough points to fight a tyrant to win before the days are over. You can even string together multiple games with a campaign mode. But here we have a solo play for using Duster and I'll explain how the game works. So first of all, what do we have here? So we have our player map down here. As you can see, we have her slots up here. So we have her name and slots up here for her health, attack, dexterity and defense. Her innate abilities and what class she is. First of all, health is quite simple. It's how many hit points she has. Represented by these plastic chips under her. When these run out, she is KO'd. Increasing these will increase her hit points. Attack is how many attack dice she can roll. Defense, how many defense cards she can roll, and dexterity is how many dash she can roll and points she can move. So for instance, if I have a dexterity of three, this means I could move twice, roll one dice, or move once, roll attack and defense dice, and so forth. Increasing these will increase our stats. We have two innate abilities, innate, innate plus one. Shower Dweller means we can start anywhere on the ball we want to, and also we get the uh, nightshade dice down here, it means we can use our trusty little wolf companion there to help us out in the fights. And we also... The innate plus one is, when we unlock that later on, we get an extra ability, which means we start with a no target dice on our position, meaning we take no effects for one turn. Next up we have slots over here, so we have active slots and lock slots. These are slots you put in per match, you'll put in defense dice here and certain dice, if you little stat buffs. Locks one stay in place the entire game, and it'll move our certain effects. We have slots down here called backup plan. What this means is when we roll dice, they have values and they also have bones on the dice. When you have so many of these, you can lock them in place up here. And then you can trigger certain abilities. If you look at the back of her card, she has certain abilities you can trigger up here. And the more dice you have, the stronger they are. If you get to six, you can upgrade and get an eight plus one ability. We'll explain that as we play the game though. So down here, we have a huge row of different slots for abilities. The ones with the stars in, we can start on there. So we get training points, we can put a dice there, slot it in. They can upgrade as you go along. Now, the game is quite confusing. There's a lot of abilities here. You see where the sheet is a ton of content taken here, all these abilities, but they aren't too bad. I mean, you're not going to spend a bit of time going back and forth, but after a few goes of the characters, you remember what the abilities are. They aren't too hard to learn. Some will heal, some will do damage to adjacent targets, some will do certain effects, status effects, buff stats, returns, and so forth. So, before we start, we are playing on the easy mode, which means we get a stat buff of two hit points extra. So, we'll start with five hit points instead of two, which is always helpful. And we also get one training point. Now, training points are used in two ways. One, you can upgrade your stats. The health dexterity are an instant pass, but you must roll a d6 and get a higher than your current stats to increase attack. So, if I roll a d6 and I get a three, I'm successful, I can upgrade my attack stat to three. I mean I can now roll three attack dice. But I'm going to use my points to acquire a skill. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to get her dagger because her dagger lets me do bleed damage and extra hits. You can see down here, when I roll this, die, this dice, it has certain damage markers and the bleed effect dice on there and the bone symbol. So that's in there. And the arrow tells me there, I can move along and upgrade more as I go along here. We've got our battle mat up here. This has two sides, the regular side and the uh, raft side. The raft side is used for the raft battles, and what this means is you get some enemies called Krenlin, which appear on the side of the raft. If you don't hit them, they'll attack the raft, damage it. When there's more than five uh, damage hit chips on the uh, raft, end of the turn, you lose the game. We have our loot cards here, loot and trove loot. At the end of an encounter, you probably draw loot cards. You can hold four loot cards. These will do certain things, like give you HP buffs, that you roll extra dice to certain abilities. Trove loot requires you to lockpick the loot. We're on these lockpick dice here. Once I lock it once, once per turn, I can turn it over and get a certain reward. We have the day counter here. It's on one day. Now, because I've chosen an enemy here called Volkre Volkesh, this is my tyrant I've chosen. Down here, because it's the game length, so it's going to be a kind of medium-long kind of game, quite long. This tells me here what enemies I need to add to my enemy stack. So when I'm building my enemies, I need to have all enemies that have these two symbols down here. So they all should have a symbol at the bottom left, bottom right corner that match one of those symbols down there. This tells me I need 7 progress points to attempt the encounter, and I must defeat this enemy in 11 days. The days are turned. After 11 turns, I've defeated this enemy, I have lost. Progress points are achieved by completing encounters, winning battles, and doing challenges. 
Once I've hit seven progress points, I can attempt to fight Volkesh, the boss. There's a zone chip up there as well. So for enemies up here, we have one point, five point, twenty point enemies. We'll explain how that works in a second. Rackish chips. These are the mech and Kremlin units I kept to the side. These are all our dice down here. Ready to go. So start of a turn, you advance the day counter. Skip it on turn one though. So we just go straight to the encounter card. So we draw the encounter card here. As you can see, it reads, Breathe, chaos everywhere. Guards, mechs, chaos, more mechs, more guards. Deep breath. It's time to move. Nothing could be more dangerous. The nearby surroundings are unknown. There's a guard just up ahead with his back turned. A quick move. Anything he's holding could probably be stolen and put to good use. Maybe a few minutes could get a lay of the land or beneficial. The opportunity for extra wares will be lost. Deep breath. Time to move. So you've got a small uh, passage at the front. Flip it over. And we'll have choices here. Some of the battles. Some are quite peaceful. But each way you'll have your progress points if you succeed. And a reward. Such as loot. If you, and these are choice rewards. If I chose this path, I get that reward. And these... This one will get that reward, and these. So I can either find a lookout perch, another the first baddie from each baddie stack, and cycle it to the bottom of the stack, as I desired. Uh, that, gives you that gives me a training point. Or pick a pocket or two. Or I can pick a pocket. I can pick pocket someone for extra rewards. The loot cards will be good, but I think I'm going to go for the uh, training point. I'm going to use these to increase my dexterity. So I can now move more and roll more dice. And I also get to draw a loot card. So I've got the... Uh, Krevlin Caviar, the single battle. Heal yourself for 1 HP at the start of each of your turns. Place this loot in your prep area to remind you of its use. There we go, got extra healing item down there. Put us to the left here, so I've got one progress point so far. You, know, you end, end the turn, you go to the recovery phase. You can recover, you can look at the valley stacks and cycle through, or you can attempt to discard your loot to get extra loot. But for now, I don't need to do that, I'm just going to go straight to day two. Day two, let's see if we get a battle. So we have. Setting into our adventures, now that Umbendar is safely in the past, Forts turns to the task of building a raft to navigate the Cerberus Ibron. Now that Umbendar is safely in the past, Forts turns to the task of building a raft to navigate Cybron. Chopping down trees is tiring, splinter getting work, but the sounds of loud quarrelling nearby reveal a simpler option. A group of unsuspecting barbarians or piles of stolen resources strewn about their camp. Brick, lumber, grain, ore and wool. So much wool. At the moment, the entire group is puzzled over how to build a catapult from two wood and three brick. Taking on the whole group is doable, but perhaps a little tough. If we make some subtle noises from the tree line, maybe we can lure a few of them away in search of a robber who might steal them their cash at random. So this is the next encounter. So we have, you can see the symbol here, it's a fight. First one it reads, distraction worked, now this is nobody's lodged army. It's going to be a fight with one less baddie point, or longest road leads to victory, attack them all. Just baddie points. I'm going to go for the second one and try to get some more loot. So we put that there. So you see there, if I do this, I get actual loot. I have no loot there. So we have to, first of all, let's go to a battle. So what happens first is we assemble our baddie stack, our baddie queue, basically. It says there, BQ, baddie points. So this just means a basic baddie point queue. Baddie points are the day times number of gear locks or characters. It's day two. I'm playing one player, so it's just two uh, baddie points. So just two of these. You always go the higher number you can. So if I had five uh, baddie points, I'd take a five. If I had seven, I'd take one, five, and two ones. Always go the highest if you can. Okay, so the first enemy we have is a Kobold Collector. So we have a few things on the, on the uh, token here, put it close so you can see. So we have the first number up here is his health. He has three health chips. When I get rid of all those, he is defeated. This number here is initiative. The higher this is, the more chance I have of going first. If this is a 6, he'd probably likely go first. The lower number it is, the less chance they have going for us in the turn order. This is their attack dice and defense dice, so on each turn he's going to roll one attack dice, one defense dice. This is his special ability, equipment. This tells me he's a, a melee unit, not ranged. Melee units will follow you around and attack you. Range will sit still and just attack you from a distance, and that is his unit type. Equipment ability means I must roll a d6 dice and then increase his stats. 2. And that increases HP by 2, so it's going to have 5 HP. So you put 5 of these underneath, put the first, first position, that's number 1, that's range, that's melee, he goes there. Next enemy is a Chimp Acrobat, so he has 2 health, 4 initiative, so he'll give you a foolish unit. 1 attack dice, he has Blind Strike 1 and Dodge. Blind Strike means start of his turn he'll deal 1 damage to strongest adjacent unit, even the enemy. And Dodge means that his unit's HP not be reduced with attack dice, so I must use other dice to reduce the HP. That's quite tricky. 
but only has two health, okay? Let's go into this. So he goes there, he is melee. I start him when I want to on the board. So I think I'm gonna start next to this unit. I want him to die first. So I'm gonna start here. Let's place the round marker. So there is so let's place the round marker. So these are six rounds in a battle. That's why battles are quite quick, they don't go on too long. After six one, if we don't win, we've lost. And on the year uh, and on the sixth battle, we get a bleed effect, so everyone bleeds. Starts on number one. That goes up there. Uh, he is three, so blue is three. Purple is four, so he goes a bit further. He'll go after. He'll go before he is. We we'll roll our initiative dice. See where we go. We got a four on a tie. We decide, so we will go first. There we go. I'm ready to begin. So, so first of all, I'm going to kill the uh, gorilla thing here first. Now, I can't use attack dice to kill him, so it's going to be quite tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the dagger to at least do some damage with this or make it bleed. If I make it bleed, it'll eventually die. So what we do on a turn is, first of all, we go first. So do we want to move? We don't want to move. We're going to sit still. That means we have four dice to roll. If I move one, I roll one less dice. If I move two, I roll two less dice, depending on my dexterity. The higher there is, the more you can move, the more dice you can roll. So I'm going to sit still. I can roll four dice. Now attack dice, there's no point because I can't roll, I can't hit him with attack. Defense dice I could roll. I can only roll one though. So I'm going to roll one of these and my dagger. Let's see what I get. So rolling these. So I've got one defense and one of this. So first of all, defense dice goes to my active slot up here. That means that when I get attacked next, I will reduce damage by one. And also this goes here. So we do one damage to him and we also make him bleed. That means that at the start of his turn, start of his turn, he takes one true damage. True damage means it ignores all defense buffs and stuff. It's basically like a, like a direct hit of damage. So we'll put the bleed dice on him, just to make a reminder. When you use a skill dice, it is kept to the side, it is exhausted. So I can't use this, this dagger again, that's sort of effect, let me put it back onto my board. So for now it is gone, it's exhausted. My turn over, so look up here, it says, Pip Lemon goes first, he doesn't need to move, so he sits still. But start of his turn, it's one damage, so he bleeds and he is defeated. He is gone. That's him gone. Now the other enemy's turn, he moves to attack me. So moves up to two spaces, there's one. He rolls one attack dice and one defense dice. Let's see what he gets. Oh, we got a two and a bone symbol. Some enemies have a little bone symbol next to their name and that will trigger certain abilities, but fortunately for us, it didn't. So two to us, one from the defense dice, that's gone, and one to our health. There we go. End of that round, so that enemy is gone. Off there, and we go to round two. Now because I have not full HP, sort of my turn, that triggers Nightshade to enter the battle. They come in whenever I want them to, so they'll come there. They always enter at the top of the battle queue, so they always go first. Nightshade can move two spaces, and rolls two attack dice. Great for us. So first of all, Nightshade will attack. All dice, see what we get. Two attack dice, and they get two hits. There we go. So that's two health off this. If they roll defense dice, they'll take less damage. On to my go, so I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna just roll two attack dice, one defense dice. I can't roll more than two attack dice. I've only got two there I can roll. Just need two hits to succeed. So here we go. Three damage and a bone symbol. There we go. More enough, just enough, sorry, just enough to kill that enemy. Encounter is completed. So first of all, let's get our rewards. So we get to uh, have a loot card. So then we get the augmented footwear, single battle. Anytime on your turn, move one adjacent position. Does that count dexterity? Place loot in prep area as a reminder. So anytime on my turn, I can move an extra adjacent space. That's always good. I can hold four loot cards. I also gain one pro another progress point, so I've got two so far. I need seven to challenge the uh, tyrant, and I get two train points, which is always good. So, I'm thinking, let's put these back here. We take a look at her sheet. There's a lot of skills here to use. So we have assassin, we have a survivalist, a gadgeteer, a wolf sister, and consumables. So different patch can take different routes. Um, I think I'm going to go with the dagger again to throwing knives. So we're going to we're going to have some throwing knives to hit enemies with. Put it down there. And I'm also going to increase her defense dice. So I'm going to roll a d6. If I get higher than one, I've got it. 
two, just about. There we go, so I'll increase that by one. Now I can roll two defense dice on my two. That's the end of that day. We'll do another, we'll do one, another day now. So next day, so we have a special encounter here, a tyrant encounter. It's exclusive to this tyrant. Hit through the fire and flames, any dragon full fans out there will know that is. So, it's kind of devastation. It appears Volkesh is asserting her dominance in a territorial dispute, attacking anything that moves. Her silhouette is all that is visible. Perched on a peak of the battlefield, her fire blasts shine in every colour imaginable. Everything is aflame. A human skeleton lies frozen in time underfoot. The brave knight looked to be in the process of putting on some undamaged armour. The armour is a bit oversized for a small creature, but it should prevent immolation. It's barely any time for a nod of respect towards the poor charred pile of bones before an enemy, already aflame, marches forward. Ooh, oh dear, what's going to happen here? So, forged in flames. So, we have a fight here. So, it says here, body points. So, that's uh, going to be four now. Uh, and add number of points equal to party size, so it's actually five. So we are going to be having five body points this time. So we're going to have five token. All units in this battle have skill in golf. And golf says all damage rolled also hits all adjacent units, including self. Wow, that's tricky. And it also says choose a gear lock to wear the armor. This gear lock is immune to damage from engulf skill. The gear lock wearing the armor is not defeated, to treat as card as loot. So when I, if I win this battle, I get to have special armor, dragon skin armor. Text me from Volkesh Tyrant Dice Ring of Fire Effects. Heavy, permanent. So this means that if I win this battle, I get a special armor that stops people from having extra effects from their dice when I fight them. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's go into this then. So we have Luckily we're playing solo, so it's not really affect us really. But, sorry, not five points, it's four points, my bad. So we have four baddies here, that's quite a lot. So we have four. Let's assemble the uh, baddie stack. So we have a Chimp Half-Wit, Blind Strike and One Mind, so Blind Strike hits adjacent units. One Mind means that on their turn, all the, the same type of enemies, beasts, will roll a one attack dice against their target. That's quite bad. He doesn't attack himself, he just rolls on defense dice, but it's quite tricky, so that's three chips for him. Number one there, he is melee. Next up we have a Minikin Monkey, so he has three health, four initiative, one attack, one defense, untargetable. If I roll a bone symbol with one of his dice, I place an untargetable dice on him, meaning I can't hit him until the next turn. That's pretty annoying. Right on there. So he is a, he is a ranged character. Another one the same. A lot of enemies here, now gotta be careful. He is ranged again. And lastly, we have a timid geophage. Treasure and flee. So what that means, what that means is. When it's defeated, it place a loot die in its position. And fleet means that at the end of round two and five, it is defeated, and this happens closing closest to opposing units with a loot muster's card one. So it's gonna leave loot behind and run off of loot. He has six health, that's quite a lot. I'm gonna suck a little bit, so that's pretty annoying. Okay, I'm gonna place myself. I'm gonna go for him first. I don't like him. He goes there. That's that. So we're gonna place initiative dice now. So we've got four dice to place. I roll a three, pretty bad. So I'm gonna go, should go four. I'm gonna go quite far down this pile, okay. So let's begin. Luckily, if they are adjacent to the other target, it still hit them, they actually damage. So first of all, the purple enemy goes first, so he has range, so he just sits still and attacks me. He rolls attack and defense dice, one of each. Oh. No hits, but we've got a bone symbol. That means he gets untargetable dice placed on him. I mean, I can't hit him until next turn. Next up, I've put the other monkey. So, same again. Two each. Two defense, one hit. So, two goes on him. I take one hit. So one chip goes down. Then it's the blue enemy. So, he moves. Uh, one, two. And he rolls a... Defense dice, but triggers the ability and rolls another attack dice for that unit there. There we go. Uh, one and one. So, one for him, one hit off him. Looking pretty bad so far. My turn. So, let's do some damage. Let's use the Krevlin Caviar to heal one. It's not my turn. Single battle. There we go. We can heal one with that. 
I'm going to attack the unit here. I'm going to I'm going to just sit still. I'm going to use my dagger, my throwing knives, and two attack dice. Let's go all out for damage. Come on. Ooh, not bad. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to use all these hits to get rid of that enemy with treasure and flee. Kill that in one go. Pretty good, pretty good turn. End of my turn, I bring in Nightshade, I place them there. End of that round, so round two. So blue enemy, just sit still and use a attack dice. It can't roll a defense dice, what do we got on there? So it rolls an attack dice. One hit, I take. One damage will go adjacent and hit his target. Get a defense dice for that ability. Second up will go for him. That dice goes. We'll roll two dice again. So it is bone symbol and attack. Oh, take one damage. And he is untargetable again. Bad. He also attacks. Just rolls a defense dice. Not too bad. He's got he's got blind strike. One damage to adjacent targets. That sucks. There we go. Rolls his defense dice. One defense. Okay. Around there. So, Nightshade should be up there. So, Nightshade will go first. We'll get them to just attack the enemy in front of us. That's three damage. Minus one is two damage. On there. And we will also. Attack and roll some defense dice too. So we'll roll two defense dice, two attack dice. There we go. So we have one for our bones, one defense dice, and enough to kill this enemy. That's that gone. End of our go. Uh, the green enemy is gone. And so is the blue one. Round three. Right, I'll go. So, Nightshade goes first. Can't target that though. So, moves 1 2. This comes off. They'll target us. They'll roll attack and defense dice. They roll one attack, one defense dice. One of each. So, one defense, one attack. Luckily, my defense saved me. Should have gone. gone there, my bad. This one also rolls an attack dice. Let's see. Untargetable dice. Oh, again. So I can't quite target them this turn. My go. I'm going to move two. These move two dice to roll. I'm going to roll one attack, two defense. One defense and two bone symbols. Now, can I use any abilities? Pretty sure I can use, I'm going to use backstab. Star buddy that's adjacent to both Duster and Nightshade for two damage. I'm going to use that. So it bounces off there. Two damage straight to this enemy. Takes one. We've got two half left. So round uh, four. Probably quite bad getting the tower encounter on the uh, third round. Round four, okay. Nightshade goes first. Let's just track this enemy in front of us. We're going to attack this enemy here. We're going to move in between and attack this enemy. So two attack dice. I just need two damage to win. Well, I just need two damage to kill him. Exactly two, perfectly enough. That's the enemy gone. This effect dice goes. They will target Nightshade because he's closer. More dice. One damage, they are defeated. Back to there they go. I've got to heal them later on if I can. My go now, I heal one. Because of the Kremlin armor. I'm going to move one. Use the footwear, move an extra one. This is three dice left to roll. I'm going to roll... Two attack, one defense. I get two defense as a start, that's good. A bone symbol there, and two damage off the sword. Not too bad. 
Ooh, getting close now. Round five. Enemy rolls their dice to attack me. One and one. So he has one defense. He did one damage. Luckily, that's prevented. I heal one because of the uh, Kreveling Caviar. I'm going to go all out attack, I think. I've got two defense dice up here. Let's go for attack. So I'm going to roll two attack dice. Might as well two defense dice. Walk and roll. Come on. Two damage. Extra defense. And a bone symbol. So that's that gone. So two HP left. Come on. Ooh, last round. Round six. We both take a bleed effect. Plus that's remind us. Both are going to bleed now on each of our turns. There go first, they bleed one. They roll the dice. One and one. So one on there. I take one, vent it with that. My go, I'll heal one with the caviar. I'll take one off because of the poison. Roll the dice. So roll the Roll the dice, I need two attacks to win. There we go, perfectly enough. And the counter is one. That was very, very hard. Very hard encounter. So the reward is, I get two training points. I think I will increase my attack if I can. Let's roll the six. Six, enough. Extra attack dice. And we're also gonna train, we're gonna get some healing. We're gonna get Flint and Tinder. Let us heal extra damage. There we go, I can heal that shots out of battles. We also keep this as a permanent armor. And we also get a loot card as well. These items are gone, single use only. And a new loot item is a Gilog's Guide to Advanced Tactics. During a training attempt, you may choose any skill to train on your Gilog mat, or automatically succeed an attack or defense attempt. So I get a free pass at one of these, or choose any of these, because you have to follow the arrows, but that was still like a free pass. That's it for this playthrough. Any questions about this game? Let me down in the comment section. If you want to see more content about this game as reviews or more playthroughs, uh, let me know down below in the comment section. And as always, like and subscribe and thank you for watching.